but if you guys can see my screen on there, it says nutrition for athletes. Uh, that's actually a picture of my daughter. So she is, um, she's now eight. Um, I think she was like five or six in this picture. But um, as you can see, the snack I brought that day was a big juicy apple. And um, it just shows, you know, that kids can uh, enjoy healthy food, especially when they know how to fuel themselves properly. So um, we're going to move on to, whoop, let's see, here we go. Okay. So um, why is nutrition important for young athletes? Well, I mean, obviously we all know that eating well is good for all of us, but for young athletes and for parents who have really active kids, it actually can be a little bit different. Um, and the reason for that is our schedules are busier, you know, we're rushing around, we're constantly on the go, and we need to nourish our kids and really fuel them properly because they are they have more energy or are expending more energy than the average child, especially these days when you're playing, you know, a rep sport or you're at an elite level, or even if you're at a recreational level, a lot of sports these days offer programs that are three, four, five, even six days a week. These kids are on the ice, on the field, in the pool. Um, and we're asking a lot of them. So it's important that we are feeding them the right foods. And, you know, it's, a, it's really easy as parents uh, and coaches to say, well, they're young, they have these fast metabolisms, they'll burn it off. And you know what, they probably will. But for me, what's so important about this proper nutrition for young athletes is if these kids are going to continue in a sport, whether they do it to a professional level or, you know, a university level, or they just continue in sport for fun, knowing how to nourish themselves properly and help their muscles recover is a skill they can carry through life and it's only going to benefit them. So that's why I think it is really important um, you know, that we really, really give the, these kids these healthy habits. So why is it important? Well, kids can gain more energy. And I know some of you are going, oh my God, I don't want my kids to have more energy. They already have so much. Um, but, you know, we're talking about that right kind of energy, that focused energy for sport. Of course, you know, when they're eating the right foods and they know when to eat these foods for performance, they're going to have less digestive issues. Um, when they know how to recover properly and what to eat for recovery, they can recover faster. They can repair their muscles faster, especially if they start to do this on a more consistent basis. And that can lead into injury prevention, which is absolutely huge when it comes to our young athletes. Um, so many kids are getting these injuries now that are uh, repetitive um, muscle injuries. And that can be prevented with the right nutrition, which a lot of people don't think of. It's that missing piece of the puzzle. Um, a bonus to this, if kids are eating really well and consistently in a, you know, have these healthy habits, it can actually increase their focus. So not only sport, we're not only talking about focus in sport, but also in school, because that's really important as well. And just better overall performance and, and feeling really good. You know, we want our kids to feel good. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, when it comes to what our kids see in marketing these days, you know, this is the kind of stuff they see, you know, they're seeing their idols and these sports stars and celebrities that they look up to having these unhealthy things. And it's not because, you know, they're catching them at their house drinking a Coke. It's because obviously they're being paid to do so. But kids don't know that. They don't think, oh, this is a marketing tool. Kids just see their favorite people drinking Gatorade or Ronaldo, you know, with KFC. And I can tell you that Sidney Crosby doesn't drink Gatorade and Ronaldo doesn't eat KFC. Drake might drink Spite. I don't really know. But as far as sports stars go, their nutritionists would kill them if they were eating these high fat, high sugar items. It's not doing their body good. It's not doing what uh, their body needs, right? And um, so, you know, this is what the kids are getting. And this is why they want to eat this stuff and drink this stuff. If there wasn't, you know, the amazing marketing team uh, for Gatorade, then they wouldn't have the sales. They wouldn't have the kids screaming for these kinds of drinks, but it's all the marketing. I wish this is the kind of stuff that we would see out there. You know, this is what I think um, would be so incredible if we could just start promoting things like this. Because if you look at Zidane Chara, he actually eats a fully plant-based diet. Not that I'm promoting that, but it's pretty incredible to see the sort of power that he has and the energy, you know, especially as an older hockey player, and he's not old by any means, but in the hockey world, you know, he's over 40, fully eating plant-based and he is amazing, right? And then we 
we have Roger Federer. I mean, you can, if you look for it, find a lot of um, pictures of him eating bananas. But I mean, it's not out there. It's not sexy, right? It's not what our kids want to see. And then, of course, we have Tom Brady eating a salad. And if you do look into his diet, um, he eats incredibly clean and an anti-inflammatory diet and all of this stuff. He's actually incredibly extreme, but it's clearly benefiting him. So why aren't these things top of mind? Why aren't these things on the news every day for our kids to see for healthy habits? It's really unfortunate. But this is the kind of stuff that I like to share with teams and at tournaments and in workshops because, you know, they can have these people to look up to. They are there. We just have to kind of look for them. All right. So what's important when we're talking about kids and we're talking about nutrition? What is our focus when, you know, if you're the coach or you're the parent, what should we be focusing on? Well, obviously the right foods. And when I talk about the right foods, I'm talking about real whole foods. Um, that's where we want our kids to get their energy from. We don't want them to depend on sports drinks and bars and shakes and powders. We want them to know how to get energy from real foods. And then of course, once they're older and they get to an elite level, perhaps, you know, yes, then they can look at supplementing with different things. But as kids, they don't need anything more than food and drinking water, you know, to really give themselves the fuel that they need. And so we can give them that, we can teach them that. Um, the right timing. So this is really important, um, you know, and I, I, I don't have enough time to dive into all of the different timings today, but knowing the right timings for your kids, just little tiny things that they can start to develop habits. Um, this is really important and this is something we can focus on um, because if you change sort of how you approach activity and you look at the nutrition you have beforehand, the nutrition you have afterwards, you know, how you, um, how you eat during events or even in the off season, these can have huge gains for your game uh, and your energy and your overall performance. And of course, then being consistent. So this is something that is, can be tricky, especially when we're talking about younger athletes. Um, but it's really important because if we're consistent about things, that's how habits are developed. When you do something over and over and over again, um, and you know, it takes work. It takes a little bit of work on their part and your part, but the more consistent you are, the more those healthy habits will develop. And that's what we want to encourage. All right, so when I'm talking about the right foods, um, what am I talking about? So we're talking about the macronutrients. So we're talking about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are an essential, um, the essential, I would say, a nutrient for energy for our kids. Carbohydrates are pure, pure energy and so quickly accessed by our muscles for energy. This is something that we really wanna encourage our kids to eat. And of course, I'm talking about fruits and vegetables and whole grains and things like that. Um, that's where we want our carbohydrates to come from. And those are the sorts of things that we really want to encourage our kids to eat. Um, Amy, can you do me a favor and just let me know when I'm getting close to um, my time, just because I don't have a clock on here and I don't want to run yeah. over for everybody. Yeah, Thank for sure. you. Um, so one of the examples I always talk to um, my athletes about is, you know, the donut versus oatmeal carbohydrate. So, um, you know, if you're on the way to practice in the morning and you grab a donut on the way because you didn't have anything to eat, um, of course, it's going to give you energy. Yes, it's full of carbohydrates, but it's the type of carbohydrates you're putting into your body and it's going to have a huge effect on your performance versus the carbohydrates in a bowl of oatmeal. So a donut and a bowl of oatmeal, depending on the size, obviously, have about the same amount of carbohydrates, but the donut has like zero fiber, fully refined um, and processed sugars, and that's gonna go into your bloodstream immediately with nothing to slow it down. So yes, it's gonna give you energy, but your blood sugar level is gonna skyrocket, your body's gonna freak out because it always wants to be in balance. So you're gonna, your body releases insulin to bring your blood sugar down, but when it's so high, it releases so much that it actually drops your blood sugar level down. That's where the sugar crash comes in. And that's when these guys crash like right in the middle of practice. They get fatigued and grumpy and lose focus. All of these things happen because now their blood sugar is really low and they're looking for their next sugar hit, right? They're not looking for, you know, a banana to bring their blood sugar levels up. They're looking for another donut and it's creating this roller coaster effect that can be really detrimental, not only physically, but mentally as well. So we want to set our kids up 
to be having the right kinds of carbohydrates. Because let's say a bowl of oatmeal is what they had in the morning. Your blood sugar levels are still going to go up, but they're not going to skyrocket because there's tons of fiber in there and minerals and vitamins. So what happens is it goes up, but at a more steady rate, and then it kind of evens out and it lasts way longer. And that's the kind of energy we want our kids to have, right? And when you tell kids in a way that can relate directly to their performance and how they're going to feel, then it makes more sense to them. Then they're going to listen. If you just say donuts are bad for you, oatmeal's better, they already know that. But it's relating it to their performance is what matters. I used to tell my kids when they were younger, you know, that they had to eat the crust on their sandwiches because it would make them run faster. Now, of course, as a parent, it's a little bit of a white lie, but kind of not, right? It's carbohydrates. So uh, in a way, it is going to give them that energy. And I can tell you their lunches never came home with the crust. So um, it's, it's really about relating to your athletes and letting them know how it's going to benefit them. Give them a benefit and, uh, and they'll, they'll follow through. So protein. Same sort of thing. We, want, um, we don't want our kids depending on protein shakes or protein bars. We want them to get their protein from real whole sources. And whether they eat meat or not, there's lots of real foods that they can get their protein from. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about timing um, and things afterwards. And then of course, healthy fat. So, you know, not all kids like avocado, but a lot more like guacamole. Um, so again, it's sort of playing with these different foods to encourage our kids to eat it and plus giving them a reason, right? Healthy fats actually are really good for inflammation, for recovery. So having something with like hemp hearts in it or having, you know, a chicken wrap after practice is uh, with some avocado in it is actually going to help their muscles recover. And, uh, and this is something that can easily be relayed to the kids to let them know, you know, and, and they can see it, they can feel better. And, and having that open conversation with your kids and your team about how they feel when they eat certain foods can really bring up a lot of issues or, or they can, you know, tell, the, tell you what they're eating that makes them feel really good. So that's really good to have that open conversation. And then, of course, water. Now, water is, I would say, the number one thing that we need to focus on with our young athletes. Um, somehow, you know, I have two kids that drink a ton of water. My third, uh, she survives off like a drop of water a day. I don't know how she does, but she does. Um, so we're always trying to find ways to increase her hydration and make water a little more enticing. You know, um, we get infused user bottles and put things in the middle there. Um, we'll, we'll have some sparkling water, you know, and encourage her to drink that. Um, and then of course there's, you know, foods where you can hydrate as well. I won't get into all of it today, but definitely you can't perform at an optimal level if you're not well hydrated. So this is something that's really important when we're talking about nutrition for performance. Okay. So getting into timings. Now this is something that can really make or break um, your energy levels and your performance when we're talking about a game. Huge game changers when we're talking about timing. So pre-game, um, I'll give you guys sort of one tip for each time, um, just for the sake of time today. Um, so when we're talking about pre-game, my one tip for you guys is that one hour before an activity, you wanna have something that is carbohydrate focused and really easily digestible. So I say carbohydrate focused because it doesn't have to be all carbs. It's okay if there's a little bit of protein, a little bit of fiber in there, but you don't want too much. If you have anything within an hour um, before a, like hard activity, a practice or a game, what happens is it can still be sitting in your belly when you start and your body doesn't know whether to focus on digestion or performance and it can actually hinder both. So you want to allow your body that hour, a full hour to really digest that food. And if you don't have a full hour, you need to have something that's liquid, like a milk, a pregame smoothie, something that your body can digest lickety split and then turn it into energy in your body um, so it's easily accessible. But pre-game, one hour before, a carbohydrate-focused snack um, that you can get into really, really fast. And that can be, even if you had a meal, you know, three hours beforehand, this can be that extra boost of energy that gives you, you know, that extra energy to make it to the end of the game. Um, and when we're talking about post game, you know, I, um, I actually uh, was really lucky enough to talk with Natalie Spooner, who played for Team Canada. And, um, and I was talking to her about nutrition. And I said, you know, if there was one thing you could 
tell the young athletes of today about nutrition that you didn't know when you were, you know, playing hockey growing up? What's the one thing that you would tell them? And she said it was her recovery um, snack and that we really need to eat it between 30 to 60 minutes after activity. And I completely agree with her because this is a total game changer. Um, your body after activity is primed and ready to accept these nutrients to help your muscles repair and recover. So having protein and carbohydrates 30 to 60 minutes after activity can not only help your body repair, recover, and grow, but it also can help prevent injuries down the road because you are nourishing your muscles and setting them up for the next activity. So you wanna have carbohydrates for post game because you're replacing those energy stores you just used and you want to have protein because that is solely for muscle repair, recovery, um, and growth for our young athletes. So 30 to 60 minutes. And this is what's so difficult, right? Because when you think about the kids that take their time getting undressed and, you know, are all like lackadaisy about like getting to the car and whatever. And by the time you get home, an hour has passed. This is where the planning comes in, where you have a post-game smoothie, where you have a um, a bag of trail mix sitting in the car, a handful of nuts, anything like that, just get it in them within 30 to 60 minutes after activity, you will see a difference and your kids will see a difference in recovery. I'm telling you, this is a huge game changer and it's something really easy to implement, right? These small, simple changes can have a huge impact. Uh, timing and events. So, you know, this, um, this can be something that obviously is unique to each and every event that you're in. So whether it's a tournament or some sort of really important game, depending on how much time you have beforehand, after, in between, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to eat and how it's going to benefit your body. So, you know, pre-game, we want to have that carbohydrate snack. Post-game, we want to have carbs and protein. But like I said, you don't want to have too much in your belly leading up to another game. So it can get a little bit tricky. And this is why I always tell people, just pack a ton of snacks, a ton of snacks. And of course, you can pack a good solid lunch and things like that as well. But if you have a lot of snacks, because we all know that things can change on the fly when we're at these tournaments, that way you don't have to depend on outside food. You don't have to go to restaurants or a concession stand. You have everything that you need, especially if you have, you know, a cooler full of tons of hydrating um, drinks. And then you have some things that are carb focused. You have some things that are protein. You have some things that are both. Um, and you just have them all in there. So you have what's available to you and you know what you need to have, when you need to have it, and you can make that choice at the time. Um, and then, of course, there's the off season or now, which is like a modified off season. Um, now is the time for our kids to really practice this stuff. And I know, you know, our kids want to practice the skills and the development. And they want to make sure that they uh, aren't falling behind. And I totally get it. But practicing nutrition in the off season is so ideal because if you want to prepare a pregame meal or you want to come up with a post-game recovery snack, now is the time that you can test it out. See how you feel. Maybe it makes you feel bloated. Maybe it's too much food. Maybe it's too little. If you can practice and go for a run or go do something that would sort of mimic the activity that you would do in a regular game or practice, you can see how your body responds. Maybe you were able to go a little further or a little longer or maybe it just didn't work for you and you had some cramping or whatever. If you do it now and you perfect, you know, those pregame snacks and those post-game recovery meals, then when we get back to full game time, or if it's the off season and, and the season begins, you're more ready than ever. And you know exactly what and when you need to eat. So you are, you're just so prepared. And this is what I'm encouraging all athletes to do right now is practice, practice that nutrition, come up with some fun recipes, and then don't worry about switching it up. Be boring, have the same thing before, have the same thing after. If you know it works, stick to it. All right. And then of course, we're talking about consistency. And this can be tricky with kids. So we have to have realistic expectations. Um, kids are kids. They're going to have treats. They're going to forget things. Um, they're going to make mistakes. And we have to allow for that because this is how they're going to learn. Um, do one change at a time. So small, simple changes, like I said. Focus just on the pregame snack. 
just you know, every time you go to do an activity one hour before, have a banana until it becomes a habit. Once you've got that down, then you can focus on something else. Um, constant encouragement. I mean, our kids, you know, they really need um, a little bit of a boost sometimes, especially when it comes to nutrition, right? If your kids are not big fruit eaters and you're telling them they need to eat fruit all the time, but then they do it, Let's encourage that. Let's let them know that they're doing something really good for their body and really good for their game. In a way, they're doing it for their team because they're not letting their team down. They're doing something to benefit them, their team, the game, and everybody. So we need to encourage our kids and set them up for success. So as a parent, you know, I make sure that I have all the right ingredients for my kids to make a smoothie, make energy bites, make a sandwich, whatever it is. I make sure that I'm always stocked up with the right stuff. So if they need to make something, they can. And I give them that ownership over their nutrition. Um, you know, and if, when my kids were younger, I just made sure I had the stuff so that I could make it for them. Um, and as a coach, you know, making sure you have plenty of water breaks, uh, making sure you have that open conversation about food. These are the ways you can really set them up for success. Okay, so talking about what to avoid. Um, this obviously, you know my feelings about this one. So one of the things that we can avoid when we're trying to teach our athletes about nutrition is celebrating with food. Um, so let me just get my notes here. So um, I feel, you know, the reward really should be the game itself. It should be being part of the team, being with your friends, being with your coach, um, and celebrating, you know, the successes within the team. Focusing on food as a reward can have a lot of detrimental effects. Um, you know, I actually, it, even if it's not even food, it's just things that aren't related to the game. You know, I had a parent on my team once that uh, we were in the middle of a tournament and uh, he told his son right before all the kids went out on the ice, if you get a hat trick, I'll buy you an Xbox. So what happened? Well, he got the hat trick. And I have to tell you, we all were a little bit floored, but what did it teach the kid? So he was celebrating at the end of the game. Was it because they won? Was it because he got the hat trick? No, he was celebrating because he just got himself an Xbox, which I guess cool, but you know, wh where is this team atmosphere here? And where is, you know, the integrity as a player? Shouldn't he just be happy to play the game? And if the Xbox wasn't a reward, would he not have wanted to get a hat trick? Or was he more selfish on the ice because he just wanted to do it himself? You know, all of these things all relate back to that reward. And food can be the same sort of thing. Um, you know, you can associate certain foods. So we also had a coach, um, a parent told me about that every time the goalie would get a shutout, he'd bring donuts for the whole team. And, you know, I get traditions and I get these things. I do. But when we're, when we're trying to teach our kids to be healthy and create healthy habits that are going to, you know, benefit them through life, having these donuts come in, I mean, not only did that put a crazy amount of pressure on the goalie, but then the kids are celebrating the donuts. They're not celebrating the win that they accomplished together. And really, isn't that what we want for our kids when it comes to playing on a team, right? And then of course it creates these unhealthy habits. Um, and kids, like I said at the very beginning, that association of being healthy and active and then having, you know, French fries. It's, we wanna create healthy food that fuels your body because you're a healthy and active individual. That's what we wanna do here. So another thing that we want to avoid is really focusing on numbers and weight. And when I say numbers, I'm not just talking about the weight of our athletes. I'm talking about numbers like how much protein they need to have, how much water they need to drink, um, you know, how much food they need to be eating. If we can just scratch the numbers and the weight, um, our athletes would be a lot healthier. So obviously this is going to have an effect on their self-image if we're saying certain things. Muscle weighs more than fat. So especially as kids are growing, they're growing this way and this way and this way and this way. And they're going through all of these changes. The last thing we want to do is make them feel bad about a part of themselves. We want them to feel amazing and strong. And that's why when I talk about food, it's always talking about it as fuel. We're not talking about food as good or bad, right? We want it to all be fuel for them. And all food is fuel. We just need to find the best way to fuel our athletes. And we want them to have a really good relationship with food, especially when it comes to sports. And when I talk about how they feel, I'm not talking about, you know, being hippy dippy. I'm just talking about how food makes them feel. Does it make you feel strong? Does it make you feel fast? 
you know, how does food make you feel? Do you feel good when you eat a certain food and how is it affecting your performance? Okay, and I only have really one more slide here, you guys, to talk about. Um, and then we can have any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer them. So how to encourage healthy eating. So there's a few things that you guys can do as coaches and parents. One is implement some rules. Um, you know, after I've done workshops with some teams, they've actually imp implemented rules of no sports drinks in the dressing room. And I can tell you that actually their performance increased after this happened because they they weren't depending on these sugary drinks for energy. They were having really good meals, they were drinking lots of water and staying hydrated, and then they were focusing on what they needed to focus on. And they really actually saw better overall performance by doing this. And as a coach, it's really easy to implement a rule and kids will follow it. They look up to you. They're going to listen to you. Um, as parents, it can be a little trickier, but you know what? Hard and fast rules, something like that that's very simple and black and white can really have a great effect on your team. If they want to have sports rings, they can have them. But when it comes to you know, your team and how your dressing room runs, you can say, hey, we're not going to have sports rings this year. Let's see how it goes. Team workshops are a great way for teams to learn about nutrition, learn recipes, um, and really develop those healthy habits. So I provide workshops virtually now, which has been really, really fun um, because I can send out recipes to everybody and we can all make stuff together. So I've been making smoothies, um, pre-game smoothies and post-game recovery drinks, and we've been doing energy bites together. And that way they're at home, they have the recipe, they have the ingredients, they're actually making them. And I find, Kids of any age, and really adults too, if you do something hands-on, you're gonna remember it more, um, you're gonna have more of an emotional connection with it, and it's gonna be something that you'll do again and again. If I just tell you how to make a smoothie, oh, it has this and this and this and this in it, that's great, sounds good, but if you make it and you try it and you like it, you're going to do it again. So workshops are a great way, also for team bonding, right? Really, really fun. Um, being an example, I mean, this is, this is absolutely huge as coaches and parents. If they see you, these kids are looking up to you. Whether you believe it or not, they are looking up to you and they are going to follow your lead. So if you're drinking, you know, pop on the way to practice every day, they're going to see that. If you're drinking water, if you're also nourishing your body, if you're eating the right foods and you're showing them that you are and you have that open conversation with them, they're going to follow your lead and they're going to do it as well. And another fun thing you can do is team meals. So right now, obviously, a lot of us can't get together at a restaurant and eat together. But this is something you can do virtually. Let's all get together and make a big salad or let's get together and make a, a Buddha bowl or a big sandwich or whatever it is. Get together, make something healthy. And when we are able to all get together and eat together at restaurants, don't do the pizza parties that all teams do. Go somewhere healthier. Find a place that makes, you know, bowls with rice and good lean proteins and all of that stuff. Or go to a sandwich place. Find a restaurant that will really encourage those healthy habits. And then you guys can do it together. As long as the team is together and doing something as one, you will find not only the team will bond, but it's like that really amazing peer pressure used in an awesome way. It's like when um, I would bring oranges or bananas for my team and they all sit in the dressing room and there's always a couple kids that are like, oh, I don't like that. But they see all of their teammates eating it and they go, oh, well, maybe I'll try it. And that's what we want to encourage, right? The healthy team atmosphere. So things that I offer, um, and I'm happy to offer to you guys as coaches or as parents, if you have teams, I do those virtual team workshops I talk about. So obviously, um, you know, globally, I can do workshops for anybody and they're really fun. Um, we can pick a couple of recipes together. I send that out to the whole team. We talk about nutrition in a fun way. We talk about food as fuel, and then we make a couple of recipes together and it's a really great experience. Um, I have an online membership for sports parents and coaches um, where we have weekly coaching calls and there's a sports parent community full of lots of information. We talk about a different topic every week that's related to um, sports nutrition. And that's been really fun as well. And I have some pretty awesome offers right now going on for that membership. So if you are interested, please do get in touch as the price is going up in January. So um, I would love to offer that to you guys. Um, as well, I have two programs available for young athletes on my site right now. One's more pregame focused and one is more post-game recovery focused. 
And I encourage you all to join my free group in Facebook. Facebook, it's called Prepare Your Athletes. So you can just type that into Facebook and uh, ask to join and I'll add you guys. Um, tons of information in there. I just wrapped up a three-day masterclass. Um, Eric was actually at it. Um, was able to uh, attend for a couple of days. So he knows, you know, that we provide some really great information and I have all the replays in there as well. Tons of recipes, tons of great info. Um, so feel free to join that group. I would love to have you guys in there. And here is my contact information if you guys want to get in touch with me. Um, you can also look up Hockey Snacks on YouTube. I have a ton of videos on there just of like healthy snacks and easy ways to make them. You can see my kids and I making a total mess. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to um, talk to any of you. You can get in touch with me in any of these ways. And I would be happy to answer any of your questions or um, help out you and your team. And now, if you guys have any questions, because I guess we're wrapping up in about 10 minutes, um, I would be happy to answer any questions. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen if I can here. Here we go. And we're back. And we're back. So I hope you guys enjoyed the presentation. I hope that was, um, you know, not too much of an overload of information. But if there's anything that I can explain for you guys, I would be happy to do that now. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, Shauna. Um super interesting presentation about uh nutrition and you definitely went into a lot of detail given that you only had like 35 minutes so that was really good i know <laughs> yeah i know really really i got it in <laughs> but no, okay. um we do have a uh, one question here from kimberly um she said could you give any more examples for the kids what about chocolate milk before or after that is a great question. So I get asked about chocolate milk all the time. Um, and so my opinion on chocolate milk, so first of all, milk, um, you know, is, is a personal choice. As a nutritionist, I know a lot of nutritionists will tell people to sort of avoid milk because of its inflammatory properties. I am on the side of it is a personal choice. Personally, my kids go through about 24 liters of milk a week. Um, I should probably buy a cow at this point, but um, uh, it's full of proteins, full of carbohydrates, hydration, vitamins, minerals. It does have a ton in it that is great as a recovery drink. Chocolate milk, however, is really just milk with added sugar. Um, so I don't recommend chocolate milk as a recovery drink every single time. As a treat every once in a while, absolutely, but it still develops that not dependence, but it develops um, a habit of wanting something really sweet after you are active. So what, what I try and encourage people to do is sure, have the milk. And then when we're a little bit further away from the activity, that's when you can kind of have those sweeter treats. But when, when it's related to the activity and directly after, especially, we want to give them something that's purely going to nourish them. And I noticed there you said about trail mix has more fat in it. And that's why it's a really great recovery snack because nuts have great protein in them, carbohydrates, fiber, and also that fat that can really actually help with inflammation. Um, and it's also really good for overall wellness, brain health, all of that stuff too. So I hope that answers your question. Great. Just as a sometimes drink. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, uh, yeah, Kimberly yeah. says awesome. Uh, so it sounds like you did answer the question. Yeah, um, I actually perfect, grew up perfect. doing um, competitive karate. And so uh, for me afterwards, I was always craving orange juice. And so I mm. definitely, throughout the years I did competitive karate, which was eight, 10, 10 to eight years, um, I would always have a glass of orange juice afterwards, which isn't the healthiest, but um, yeah, that, I, I totally understand what, what you mean in terms of um, kids associating the activity directly to um to the cravings that they have afterwards as well so right it's like um and i mean a lot of it isn't it's not the parents fault it's it's what's accessible too right like i know for me i walk into a hockey rink and what's available sports drinks french fries popcorn pizza right none of that stuff is really there to nourish our kids and um and you know of course it's stuff that kids like but when we're talking about being healthy and active, we really want to give them what their body is craving. And that's nourishment. That's real whole foods um, and something that can help their muscles repair and recover, help replace those energy stores, all of that good stuff. So 
Um, of course, there's a time and place for chocolate milk. There's time and place for chocolate cake, right? But we don't want to be having it as it relates to activity. We want to really try and encourage those healthy habits. Yeah. All right. Great. Um, did anybody mm. else have any more questions? You guys are uh, welcome to go to the participants and raise your hand as well if you're more comfortable speaking verbally. Um, but yeah, anybody is welcome to do so. And if anybody thinks of any questions later on, because I know sometimes I watch these presentations and I think, oh, you know what, I would have loved to ask that, please feel free to email me or like I said, join that Facebook group. It's, uh, it's really fun. Um, we have like over 400 and something members in there and they all are sports parents and coaches and um, there's just some really awesome information in there. So um, I encourage you all to sort of go to Facebook and type that in and, uh, and I'll add you right away because it's really, really fun. And and I would love to connect with you all after too, because I really appreciate you being here. And um, I'd love to thank you all personally. So I do, I thank you so much for being here. I really, it, it warms my heart. It really does on a Friday night at almost nine o'clock for me. So it's almost wine time. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly. I had a glass of wine today mm -hmm. at lunch and I was like, yeah, mm. <laughs> Friday, Fridays are really different. <laughs> yeah, really exactly. It's Friday. If it was a Thursday night, it wouldn't be the case, but Nope, it's a Friday. So um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love doing stuff like this, though. It really is my passion. Uh, as I'm sure you could tell, I could talk about this stuff forever. Um, so really, if you guys have any, um, any questions or comments, please feel free to get in touch anytime. Thank oh, you so much. One thing, um, you know, with oh, yeah. our, the kids being home now, we're, we're in Alberta and okay. the kids are online learning right now. And I'm, I'm coaching hockey and I just talked a little bit earlier, but the kid, one of the kids, we were doing a zoom, uh, workout and it was, um, we finished at eight 30 and he hadn't eaten since 10 o'clock that morning and he was home. Ooh. Um, so that's where I'm going to, I'm, I would like to do a session with the kids regarding, um, eating and, and how important it is and also um like maybe do a teaching on how how they can make some things at home right now because their parents aren't home right and they're 11 and 12 so this was really good oh absolutely oh good you know what um kimberly if you reach out to me i can give you some uh recipes or ideas that you can share with them yeah. um if and because there's there's some things that um a, you know 11 12 year olds 10 year olds are completely capable of making no cook you know at home completely safe um that uh, they need to be eating, especially if they're focusing and they're doing school all day and they're doing workouts and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'd be happy to help you out with that for sure. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. All right. It's interesting to see, you know, all over the country, all the different restrictions and what everybody's doing right now. And oh man, it is, uh, it's been a crazy year. So any, any way I can help you guys out, I'm happy to. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm actually also in Alberta, Kimberly. So um, yeah, the, the restrictions here are definitely very intense. Alberta's had some uh, crazy numbers um, in the past few weeks. Um, so yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely the second wave is definitely hitting hard. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're starting to sort of see those crazy numbers come in the Toronto area. I'm just north. So um, it's, it, it's coming, you know, and I mean, it's here, but it's, I, I, it doesn't, I, I don't think we're kind of on the tail end of it just yet. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, um, unfortunately, but you know, there's things that we can do to keep our kids busy and healthy and active. And, uh, and I encourage everybody to do that for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then are all of your kids then doing their school at home, um, schooling at home, or are they still going? To so, well, mine, so I have three kids where they're actually in school still. Um, our school, we're very fortunate, is very close to us and it's very small. So um, in a regular year, they only have 300 kids and it's a JK to eight school. So right mm -hmm. now they have less than 200 there and, um, you know, so far so good. So okay. fingers okay. crossed that we can continue to do that because I feel very fortunate that they're able to, you know, go to school, have that structure, see their friends, um, and just break up the day a little bit because I know when they were virtual, sort of in April, May, like the end of last year, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't great. Like it wasn't a great experience. So I'm glad that they're able to be in school and I'm a little nervous yeah. for the new year after the holidays. Oh yeah. What they're going to do so. 
Yeah. We'll see it. Cause I mean, that's what happened. We, we went into March break and we never went back. Right. So yeah. I'm a little nervous that, um, that might happen for the holidays, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. the vaccination is hopefully going to be okay and ready to go in the new year. So, um, yeah, yeah hopefully the, the, the future is looking brighter than it has been, um, for the past. Absolutely. Month, so. Well, um, the fact that we're even talking about the vaccine actually happening is, is mm-hmm. pretty remarkable considering, um, you know, we, I found out about all of this less than a year ago and, you know, I think usually they were saying, um, I saw something on the news saying that they usually take over four years to make, uh, mm-hmm. typically. So I think it's, it's pretty phenomenal what's happening right now, but yeah. yeah, as long as, you know, we can all just keep being safe and positive and do what we're doing. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks mm-hmm. so much, Shauna, for, for your talk on nutrition. And, um, I hope everybody in the room was able to gain some insights, um, on what to feed your kids and your team and so, so on and so forth. Um, so I will be bringing everybody back to the main room. Um, So from there on, we'll just be wrapping up the event. So hang on tight. And then just click return to main room whenever you guys are ready.